Okay, guys, so we're going to speak a little bit about the upcoming fast on Sunday. Really, the two fasts. The fast is going to be this coming Sunday, and another three weeks, the fast of Tisha B'Av. So we'll talk a little bit about the concept of a fast, which, by the way, in Hebrew is either called a tzom. We find in the Gemara the terminology is a tanit, tainis. Okay, there's a whole Masech in Shas called Masechah's Tainis, which discusses many different types of fasts. So we're going to talk about the concept of a fast day, what's the idea of a fast day, what's behind it, what are a person supposed to be focusing on during the fast day, uh, and number two, we're going to be focusing on the period of time of the three weeks. So I'm assuming you've, you've heard a lot of read about the halacha, maybe you've heard some Kabbalah from, uh, from uh, some other Rebbeim. So I'm going to be giving over to the basic, uh, hopefully some basic hashka for the basic outlook, and in a pra- hopefully in a practical way to, fe- to see how we're going to be able to to go into the three weeks and understand it and probably hopefully get the most out of it that we can. So we're going to divide it into the, the halachas of the tainus, the halachas, the laws of fasting itself, the concept of fasting, as well as this whole time period of the three weeks. And now we're going to divide into two parts. Okay, there is, part number one is connecting in general to the concept of the Beis HaMikdash, more specifically the destruction of the base of Mikdash, our lack of having the base of Mikdash, and how that affects us, and how we're supposed to be thinking about that and relate to that. Uh, and number two is, more specifically, the Avelus. Avelus, anybody know what the word Avelus means? What? It says morning. No, morning, okay? Avelus means the morning. It's the morning period. Okay, so on a basic level, I first want to talk about our whole approach as a general as a general approach, before we get to the morning, about what does the base of English mean to us? What is it supposed to mean to us? How are we supposed to try to relate to it? And then once we get to that, then we can try to understand a little bit about the concept of morning, right? If you jump morning, which is really what these three weeks are about, a morning time over the base of Migdash, so it's very hard to mourn over the base of Migdash before we really understand what the base of Migdash is all about and the way we're supposed to be uh, relating to it. Okay, so we're going to start off with the halachas of Ta'anis. Okay, again, Ta'anis is that word that refers to a fast day. Okay, so this coming Sunday, we have the first of two fast days that find themselves on the calendar in the summer months, and that is Shiva Asar Tammuz, the 17th day of Tammuz. Anybody know what's interesting about the fast day of the 17th day of Tammuz this year? It's not on the 17th day of Tammuz, that's correct. And so to Tisha B'Av is not going to be, by the way, easy way to remember, Shiva Sabatamas and Tisha B'Av are always on the same day of the week. They're exactly three weeks apart. So this year they're going to be three weeks apart from Sunday to Sunday, but they're going to be a day off. Okay, my daughter doesn't appreciate that, but she was born the day after Tisha B'Av. So this year her birthday is on Tisha B'Av. Right, which is not was actually a very interesting halachic question, which we're not going to talk about now, but it's a very fun question. I don't know if Ravel has got into this. Um, it almost happened to my daughter, almost exactly, but that year it didn't happen. It was one day off. But what happens if you have a year like this year, where the, the fast of Tisha B'Av is supposed to be on Shabbos, and it gets postponed to Sunday, and somebody becomes bar bat mitzvah, right, on Sunday? Are they obligated in the fast or not? Yes. Okay, so it's an interesting question. Is it a makeup from the day before, or is it, or is it really this is the day of the fast? Okay, so um, interesting. But anyway, the, so that's what we're gonna have. This so these are the two fasts. Now these two fasts um, are one of are two of the of the many fasts, not many, but the several fasts we have throughout the year, which are all. Uh, commemorating, if you will, the destruction of the base of Middash. Most of the fast days we have throughout the whole year are about the Churban Habayis, the destruction of the Temple. So let's take a look at the first, if, I, if, anything, if, if somebody already said this, so somebody let me know. Anybody read about the Rambam? Did anyone the Rabbim, talk about the Rambam yet? Times? Okay. So very, very fundamental, important Rambam that everybody has to know, along with every other Rambam that was written. But this one is very important for the Lachas of Ta'anis, and that is the Rambam introduces... The halachas of Tain is also brought down by the halachas farm as well because it's such a powerful words of the Rambam. But the Rambam starts off, again, he has a whole section in his Yad HaZak, in his magnum opus on the halachas of, of all of the, all the halachas that exist in the Torah. So he has a special section on Hilchas Tanis. And there he writes, Mitzvah Asei Min Torah, it is a positive commandment, Lizok Olaharia Bachat to 
call out and to sound the trumpets, al kol tzara shetavo al atzibor, on any bad, okay, anything, any bad event that happens to the tzibor, Shinamar brings a pasuk in the Torah that talks about that, and then the Rabbim explains. V'davar zemi darke ha-tshuvahu, doing this is one of the methods of tshuva. Now why is calling out and screaming to Hashem a method of tshuva? He says, Shebizman shetavo tzara, when a tzara comes to Klal Yisrael, and they scream out to Hashem about the tzara, about the, if I, if I use a Hebrew or Yiddish word that you don't know, please stop me. Okay? Sometimes I do that without noticing. Um, so tzara, anybody who knows what the word tzara means? Tzara, why don't you stop me before? You've got to stop, okay? Stop me. Tzara is pain, pain okay? And in this case, a tzara would be like a bad event, you know, a, bad, a difficult, difficult times, okay? Times of distress. So if a tzara, if a bad event happens to Klal Yisrael and they call out, and they scream to Hashem. What are they basically saying? They're saying, Hashem, we realize, and they realize that because of the way we acted, these unfortunate events are befalling us. Kakosuv, as the Pasuk says, that because of your iniquities, things have been happening. And their recognition of the fact that what's happening to them is a result of their evil doings, their bad ways, and their misconduct, that itself will be the reason, that will be the cause to remove the tzara. So when a person recognizes, he goes to Hashem and realizes that there's something bad happening here. Wow, this is horrible. Hashem, help us. We, Hashem, we realize that we messed up. We need to fix our ways. We're, we're, we're looking to change. When a person recognizes that, so then they are dealing with the root of the issue. As opposed to, and here the Rabbim writes a very, very strong Lushan, very famous words of the Rabbim, Avalim lo yizaku, velo yariu, if a person doesn't call out. Ela yomru, and this is things that happen, oh, you watch this, you literally watch this, uh, d- d- daily events by people, right? You'll watch, especially during Corona, and things like this, you'll see the way different people respond to events that are going on in the world. He says, if a person says, no, they don't call it to Hashem, and they don't scream, and they just say, Dover zevim minag olam, this is what happens. Once in a while there's an earthquake, once in a while there's a tornado, once in a while a building falls down, whatever terrible things are happening in the world, and you say, okay, you know, things happen. And it's a minigah olam, that's just, that's nature, that's natural. And that minigah olam is what caused this tzara. There's no reason, there wasn't no guiding hand behind this. Zu nikri nikris. This was just, a, it was an occurrence that happened. He says, a person who thinks like that, harezu derech achzorios. This is a callous and cruel way of thinking. Cruel, he calls it cruel. He doesn't say it's wrong. He doesn't say it's, I think you should do better. He says that is a cruel way of thinking. And he says it causes a person, what does it cause a person to do? When a person attributes it to, oh, statistics, or the, that guy was a bad guy, so then what is he doing? He's removing all blame, all responsibility from himself. He's shirking any responsibility. He's taking Hashem out of the picture. And he's saying, okay, it's just, this is what happens. So when a person does that, he's completely missing the point. And he says, that is actually the cause for these events to continue to happen. Chas v'shal. Okay, and he says, and that's, he brings a passage in the Torah, but the Torah refers to us talking about the difficult things happening to our lives as a carry, as a something that just happened, happenstance. Okay, so really the idea of tshuva and the idea of calling out to Hashem is recognizing that the world is not hefker. The world is not a free for all. Thank you. The world is just not a free for all. Just things happen. That's not the way the world works. And that's one of the basic elements of what we're doing is when we stop. We stop our daily activity. We say, you know what? Things are going on here. Things happen. In our, in our situation, we're talking about things that happen to the Jewish people. We don't believe that history was just something that happened in the past that had to do with us. We believe that we're part of the Jewish nation as an eternal nation, right? And Hashem did something to us back then for a reason. And if things haven't gotten better, that means we haven't fixed the original problem that was causing it, right? And therefore, it's all, and we, everyone knows the concept. The Jewish calendar is cyclical, right? It's... It's not just, you know, one long line. If things are going around and around, that means this time of the year represents a time where we were really messing up and we were really not getting it and we caused the destruction of the temple. So we have to now internalize that 
and figure out that there's something going on. So the real focus is we're stopping. We're not saying, oh, it's a virus or oh, it's a this or that happened right now. It doesn't mean you're not supposed to be practical. I'm a very practical guy and I'm, I'm a big proponent of like, I don't want to get into anything political. But like I really like the doctors. Some people like make fun of doc- I'm into like doctors and science. I'm into all that stuff and you should be into that stuff. That's not the point. But when you always, I'll just tell you a story that just happened the other night. So Baruch Hashem, everything's great by me. I, I love Hashem and I thank Him for every day. We just had a few uh, little things going on in my family like Two of my kids broke their nose within one week. Uh, one, my son is at the, By the way, I'm really a normal guy. I'm, I'm everything's fine. But well, anyway, I don't want to get into it. But he yeah. broke. And then my, my other son had, append, had appendicitis. So we had an appendectomy. We had to take his appendix out. And then another girl. Anyway, so what did my wife do? She says, what do you got to do? You got to check. <coughs> check the mezuzahs, right? So when your wife tells you to do something, there's nothing happening. You're doing it, right? Even if you don't want to do it. I just checked it. It doesn't matter. I just checked the put No, you have to do it, right? But what I did, and, you know, even though my wife respects me, but, you know, in this type of situation, you have to, like, show her another source. If you just tell her to trust you, it doesn't work. So I showed her. I just printed out something from her, from a, from a Besden, that somebody asked the question. There's things happening. Our kids are falling. Things are going on. You know, should we check the mezuzahs? So he said, first of all, Baruch Hashem, it's nice to hear that you have, you know, very active children. And I'm happy about to hear that. And you know, it's not a bad idea to check the mezuzahs because there is such a concept in Judaism that there's the mezuzah which, which represent the shmirah protection. Kind of, he says, but really what you should be doing is checking your actions. You should be doing tshuva and realizing if Hashem is doing this to you, so there might be some type of message He's trying to send you. Right? As you have to think of it. Think about what's going on in your life. Think about the way you're davening, about the way, the, what you're teaching your children. There are a lot of things to think about to exempt yourself from doing any of that and pin it on the mezuzahs in a certain way is doing what the Rambam here is discussing. Right? It's being an achzari. It's being callous and cruel because you're, you're missing the point. Now again, it doesn't mean you can check the mezuzahs, right? Check, believe the doctors and during COVID, be careful and wear the mask, don't wear the mask, wherever you guys like to go. The bottom line is that you have to be, practically have to be in the world, but don't miss the point. The point of COVID wasn't well, you see the vaccine is good, or the vaccine wasn't good, or you should, but that's not the point that God was trying to tell us, right? We have to internalize the message, but realize what's going on. So what I, okay, so this is very important, Rambam. Now, what, what's interesting about the Rambam is that I told you guys that I was going to explain to you the concept of a fast day, right? Because this is the first halacha in the halachas of fasting. And yet the Rambam didn't mention anything of fasting yet. Now, that's interesting. Why is that? Because really, the, the concept of a fast itself is also based on this. In other words, fasting is really just one of the pieces of the bigger picture of doing tshuva. The concept of a fast on its own, which by the way, ironically, has, very often the opposite happens, right? You have a lot of people that they just, they're good Jews, right? So they fast, right? But they sleep the whole day, they get wake up late, they don't get us. So they didn't eat one thing and they didn't drink, right? But they didn't, they barely dove in and they were, had a headache, so they were sleeping half the day, right? And then the other half the day, they were watching a movie. And then whatever they were doing, right? And there goes Tishabov, right? There goes Tishabov. So, that, so that's missing the point. The Rambam, only after this, after mentioning everything I just said, then the Rambam, again, this is the halachas of Tainus, this is not the halachas of Tshuva. The Rambam has a whole separate area where he talks about tshuva. Here the Rambam talks about fasting. And he spends three halachas introducing the concept of fasting with tshuva. When bad things are happening, things happen, you have to internalize. Think about it. Call out to Hashem. Realize that you're doing something, that we're doing something wrong, and we haven't fixed the things that were already wrong from before our time. And that itself will be the cause to remove the problem. And then, after all that, the Rambam says, and if you don't do it, it's very bad, right? And then, after all that, the Rambam says, divrei sofrim, and there's a rabbinic, rabbinical enactment also to fast on every time we had a bad thing that happened to Jewish people until Hashem gives us rachim. By the way, this, this would apply even, it used to be they used to fast. We don't do this so much anymore, but when, it, when the, well, it wasn't enough rain. So when there wasn't rain, especially in Eretz Yisrael, in Israel, so they would get together, they would fast, and they would wait for Hashem to answer their tefillahs. So fasting is one component, which is part of a bigger picture of doing tshuva, specifically not regular tshuva, because again, that Ram talks about in a separate area of tshuva. He has a special halachas of tshuva. Here we're talking about tshuva specifically within the realm of things that are happening to us or that happen to us at this time. 
that we realize the cause of them is our own behavior, our own actions that are not yet perfect, and our recognition that by fixing our problem, our fixing our, our, our ways and to more align them with what Hashem wants, that will be the antidote and that will actually be the cure for the problem. Yeah? So basically, if we're doing what Hashem wants, Hashem wants to send us these messages. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, Hashem wouldn't send us the messages if, uh, if everything was fine, 100%. And that's why you heard all for a corona, all the all different rabbis. And they have to be careful because you can't, you know, most people, you know, can't don't don't have a direct line to God to know exactly what the problem is, right? But a lot of people claim that they do. So you have all the other rabbis saying this is what happens. So you have to be careful not to necessarily to pinpoint on anything. But the concept, that's why you've heard a lot of a lot of talk all throughout, let's say, Corona was we need to improve and Hashem, it sounds like it's sending us a message to this type of area, let's try to work on these things. That's that's the idea. Okay? So that's point number one is the tightness. So I'm sure you got the halachas from from El from Avelbaz. Um, try to obviously in the end of the day there's a framework. In Judaism, there's always a framework for things. That means there's always the system, there's always the for lack of a better term, the dry aspects of the letter of the law. That's the framework. So you have to do the fast. But the idea of the fast, right, is to bring us on the deeper levels to bring us to a recogn- recognition of these ideas that the rabbi is conveying over here, which is we're supposed to be thinking about it, we're fasting, we're, we're stopping our regular schedule, we're not having our just our nice you know, breakfast at the coffee, like, wait a second, it's going to be a little difficult today. You know, I've got to change something. I have to be do a little self-introspection. Okay, that is point number one. And I didn't think I'd speak so long, but apparently I do, so I have to start moving on. Okay, so let's go on. So that is, so I said, we're going to talk about two major points. Someone is the fast. That's the idea of the fast. So again, do the actual halachas, but try as much as you can when you're, when you're feeling the fast, when you're feeling that uncomfort, that discomfort, and that lack of, of, of the regular day that you normally have, realize, yeah, it's not a regular day because there's something wrong. Right? And, that's, and, and even if you could just make that recognition, that's something easy to do. You know, there's something off and I'm in pain. And yeah, you know why you're in pain physically? Because there's something off spiritually also. There's something off with the whole Jewish people right now spiritually until we have the base of English. And we have to recognize that and we have to try to feel that pain, and that segues us into the next point. Okay, the next point is the whole concept of the three weeks. So as I said, there are two aspects. So just the concept of thinking about the base of English, and then there's the morning. Why do I divide it into two points? Because the morning, the concept of morning is really a very difficult thing for us to do. Why is that? Because n- none of us have seen the base of English. None of us have ever experienced what the base of English is all about. And to mourn something which you don't know of and you don't therefore really miss is a very difficult thing to do. So the first, and I think the most important thing for us to be doing starting now already, it's really every day of our lives we should be doing it, but starting now is trying to make a connection to the Beis HaMikdash. Now, not stomach, not specifically, not just to any connection, but to try to develop as much as we can a real Longing. I remember there was a great quote from a rabbi. Actually, it wasn't even a rabbi of mine, but I'd heard from my friends who said over his line, he had a great line. He used to say that, what are we hoping for? So you would say, we're hoping for the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdash, right? That's what we're all hoping for, right? But the truth is, how many of us are really hoping for that? Are we, real, all, real, we really wake up in the morning hoping for the Beis HaMikdash? Let's be honest, most of us are not really doing that. So what are we going to do? We're just going to fool ourselves? We're going to pretend? The worst thing to do is to pretend. The worst thing is to, is to fool yourself into thinking that you are something which you're not, or you're doing something which you're not really doing. So he used to say, you know what we're really doing now during this time? We are wanting to wish, to will, to aspire, to hope, to long for the Beis HaMikdash. Right? We're so, that's how many steps away we are. We don't even want it. We don't even want to want it. You know, I had a, had a teacher in high school. He was uh, good old Bobby, Coach Bobby. Um, he was like a chain smoker. He was very against anybody smoking. Because uh, he realized it was a bit. But like... What sport? What, what sport did he coach? Yeah. Uh, basketball. Uh, so he, uh, he talked like this. Um, but he, he didn't even want to stop. Like, if somebody would try to steal, he would, like, his, his kids try to do, they steal his stuff, and he would, like, threaten to kill them. It, he was, he, he didn't even, you don't, right? It's one thing you want to stop, like, it's hard. Like, I don't even want to stop. But if, would you, what, what would it be like if you wanted to want to stop? 
Then, then, right? There, if you think about it, we're very, very far away from the concept of Beis Amidus, but we have to try to develop ourselves to the point where it's something that we, we want to want to have. We want to wish, about, wish for. It's something we want to hope for. The Beis Amidus was such a central place of such a central place and of, of the Jewish people. It was a center, a central, uh, it was a focus of the whole Jewish people. Now, it happens to be we're in a better situation than most people because we're very close. It happens to be my good friend Corey, I mean Shmuel, happened to just ask me, just ask me the other day if I, if I say the, something called Al Naros Bovel. Anybody know what Al Naros Bovel is? Al Naros Bovel is one of the chapters in Tehillim that a person is supposed to be saying person is supposed to be saying um, before they bench. And ironically, everybody knows that what do you say before you bench on Shabbos? Yeah. Shira Malos. Shira Malos is the replacement for Al Naros Bavel that on a happy day like Shabbos or Rosh Chodesh or Yontif, where you can't say Al Naros Bavel, so you replace it with Shira Malos. And what happens? People just don't do Al Naros Bavel, they do Shira Malos, which is a little bit silly in a certain way. But, but it, that actually... Um, Strength is the point I just made, right? Because we don't really w- warn about the basic English, right? We just turn it into a song. We, we joke around about it. And by the way, even the Eimash Kachech songs, a lot of the times, are just a way of singing about something you're supposed to be crying about, right? Eimash Kachech Yerushalayim is in the capital, is in that chapter of Tehillim, which is about, Al Naros Bevel Sham Yashavnu Gam Bochinu. That's a nice accent. I can't do that. I can fake it. But this is a great but we cried, right? Everybody's not in the right now we sing it. But we're supposed to be crying it, right? We're supposed to be crying it. That and that's this. So what we can do at this time, and I and I and I implore everybody to really try to do this. I used to get schmoozing from my in back in the in the Mir Yeshiva from from my shikum that would, would suggest, especially during this time, really the whole year, but to do things that are gonna start getting you in the mode of thinking about there was something called the base of Migdash. There was something so special to the Jewish people. We don't even really appreciate, but we want to appreciate it. The Chavetz Chaim has a sefer called Tzipisa Yeshua. Tzipisa Yeshua is a quote from the Gemara. The Gemara says that one of the things you're going to get asked when you get up to Shemaim, besides that you learn the whole Torah, right? It doesn't say that actually. It says if you, you were Osik in Torah and if you did, you got married, different things. One of the things they're going to ask you is, they were you tzipita li Yeshua? Li, li, li what does tzipita li Yeshua mean? Right, more than it's like, did you long for it? Did you really, really want it? Did you want, I know people that write contracts that have, people that sign leases on apartments that in the contract it says, if Mashiach comes, you have to get out of the apartment, I'm coming back. There are people that, that take these things seriously. Tzipita li Yeshua, what? In Yerushalayim, yeah, people in Yerushalayim, people in Israel, whatever. To be the Yeshua means you have to long for it. In order to long for it, you have to do things that are going to get. I'm sorry, once they are going to get you into the mood. So Al Naros Bavel, someone, if you people could, even if you don't say it the whole year, maybe try to say Al Naros Bavel and think about the words. Go through the words of Al Naros Bavel. See, of the Yeshua. I don't know if we have it in English, but it's a sefer that the Chavetz Chaim wrote. It's in something called the Kol Kisve. Of its time, if you have a hard time finding it, I'm sure any of your Bame or Corey can help you um, find the, the, that safer. It's a beautiful thing to read. He talks about how important it is to think about Mashiach, think about the Beis Hamikdash. There's a Chazal. Chazal tell us, Chazal tell us that um, that in the base, in times of the Beis Hamikdash, all of really all of the tsaras that we have, the Medrash is a Medrash is is a result of not having the Beis Hamikdash. So this is a little bit of a a little bit of a, a more selfish way of looking at it. But think about all the troubles of your life, Chas Hashem. Think about all the things that are hard, not going well, the difficulties, the way Jews are treated on a more global scale, how hard it is to, to try to do it. We want to sit and learn Torah and we have to worry about money. But there's so many things going on in our life and so many tsars, so many people are sick. And so, right? The, the Chazal say that all of the tsars that we have are a direct result of not having the base of Mikdash. So imagine that there would be something called the base of Migdash. So we'd have clarity. We would have, we would have our physical existence would be better, would be safer, would be healthier, right? And that's all coming from the base of the Migdash. Imagine there was something so deep and spiritual and so uplifting that we could have. It was right over here. You know, 
the Kotel itself is a very interesting. I'll take your question quickly. Sorry. Uh, yeah. You were uh, in the process of answering it. Oh, okay, great. I'll keep going. So um, there's a, you know, the Western Wall, which is I mean, everybody comes and they dance here, right? But if you, it's an interesting thing. This Western Wall is the last remnant of. Okay, now the southern. Well, I'm not getting to the whole discussion of different walls, but let's just talk about the Western Wall because we go there. Yeah. So the Western Wall is, that's the piece representing, the destructed temple, the destroyed temple that we had. On the one hand, it's great that we here. We weren't here for two thousand years, and we should appreciate being here, right? But on, in other words, it's like looking at Chazal. They refer to this. Some people refer to this as meso mutal of It's like it's as if the dead body is right in front of you. A relative right in front of you. The Gemara talks about when a relative before they're buried. It's called meso mutal of the, the person isn't even buried. It's right there in front of you. That's in a certain way what the Western Wall is. It's amazing. We're here. We, we should be. A, we're happy to be here. But we're looking at a destroyed temple. We're looking at the place where we used to have such an amazing, glorious base of Mikdash. And now, and now this is, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the destruction. So there has to be those, that, that, that double feeling that's going on where we're at the Kotel. Yes, we're excited, but we miss so much. Um, and, and, and if a person is able to get into that mode, to think about what the base of Migdash represented, and I guess I, I would suggest learning about it in the next few weeks specifically. Take the Sefer, the Chavitz Chaim, or read other articles about, you could even take Rabbi Ken Spiro, everyone knows Ken Spiro? Mm-hmm. Rabbi Ken Spiro, take his books, read about Read about the Beis Hamikdash. Just read about it. Read about what it was, what it meant to the Jewish people. The whole world knew about the temple. Everybody knew about the temple. And the Arabs, I think, claim now that they didn't exist, but that's silly, right? All historians know that it existed. And everybody always knew about the temples. So you have to you have to internalize that, learn about it, and then if you start, the more you connect to it, then we could think about really internalizing the laws that we're about to be experiencing. Hopefully not. Mashiach Sin come maybe today. I mean, but if but if these laws that that if that we have to if we have to experience them in the next few days, the mourning will be some type of mourning. It will be right. If, if first appreciate what we're missing, appreciate what we want to have, and the 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 uh, the aspirations to have this connection, and then we can mourn the fact that yeah, you know, we don't have that. We're missing so much. We're missing such a vital aspect of our of our people, of our religion that's not here. And, and maybe the saddest part about it is that we don't even realize how vital it is, right? It's like sometimes, you know, you look, you, you know, it's like uh, a kid goes into an amusement park, right? And you spend all this money, they'll go, all the, and they're there by the, by like the, the little Ferris wheel, the, the small one in the beginning, like there's major roller coasters up and down, right? And they're just staying here in the front. They don't even know what they're missing. They're happy, but like, you know how much money I paid for you to go on all those amazing rides? Like it's the crazy where it goes upside down and the whole thing. Well, you know, you're missing the whole, you're missing the boat. Like you're not you're not there. So that we're we're missing the boat. Even if we imagine that there's some amazing experience that we don't have, and that's the base of Mikdash, like I said, which is the source of, of the simcha. The lack of the base of Mikdash is the source of our of our pain and our suffering, which unfortunately everybody knows about. Hopefully, people in this room are not personally suffering so much, but we all suffer on certain levels and. And definitely, as a people, we are, and it's something that we have to we have to recognize. So those are our three points. Number one, the tainus itself, which yes is a technical fast, but really, like the Rambam tells us, is about it's about something much bigger. The the, the fast is one piece of that puzzle, of tshuva. Of what does that mean? Don't be that callous individual who's blaming everything on that's the way the government dealt with COVID or it wasn't a good idea with the vaccine. or That's the missing the point. The point is there's something going awry here. Shem is sending us a message. We're supposed to get it. And when you get it, that's the, that's the secret to fixing the problem and getting rid of the problem. That's number one. And the fast is part of that. Fasting is part of that process of stopping and, and feeling the pain. Something's off. Yes, something is off physically and spiritually something's off and I have to recognize that. And then the two other aspects of the morning of the three weeks is number one, before we talk about mourning, we have to talk about what are we, what are we missing? What are we mourning about? What is the base of the mission? Something that has to be part of our lives. It has to be part. How do we do that? We're going to start. Everybody hopefully will take something very practical. I gave a few examples. You can learn through al Nars Bavel. You can take the Sefer of the Sefer You can take Rabbi Ken Spears history books and some others. Learn about the base of the Just Learn the halacha. Learn through the Rabbah. There are many areas. Take Something, learn about the base of Migdash and see, try to picture. They have nice pictures about what it was now. 
right? Go maybe go to the Machona Mikdash. Maybe that's a good idea. We should go there during the three. We go to the Machona. Take a tour around what the base of Mikdash looked like. Imagine all the 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 Nisan, the constant miracles that were going on right here. The Chazal say there were a, n- a number of miracles that happened all the time when the base of Mikdash was standing. It wasn't like you had to you just come and see miracles. And when you get to that point, when we have, and that should be, our, should be our major goal right now, is to wish, to will, to want, to aspire, to desire, to hope, to long for the base of Mikdash. At least that. If we're not there yet, but we want to be there, we want to get closer to being there, and when we get there, then we're able to maybe feel some type of mourning, and when we start doing these halachas of, with our clothes and showering, and all these things are going to come up in the next three weeks, uh, it'll be hopefully something which is not just technical halachas, but things which are part of a mourning process of realizing there's something out there that we're missing, that Bezat Hashem we're going to connect to. And like Chazal say, call him Abel Yushalayim, if a person is zocha to really mourn, so then a person do, if a person does that, he will be zocha, he will merit to see the rebuilding of the base of Mikdash. You can't really appreciate the rebuilding of the base of Mikdash if you don't feel the pain, you don't feel what it means to be missing the base of Mikdash. So we should all be Zohar Bezat Hashem to do that and to have an amazing rest of the day and hopefully these Allahs won't apply.